I had completely forgotten that there was a new Nintendo Direct dropping this week, but am I ever glad I didn't miss it. Unlike the previous Indie Direct, grateful as I am for introducing me to another crab's treasure, this one had some big first-party announcements. I was tuning into this one, mostly expecting a few new updates and maybe some interesting third-party stuff. But the big N really decided to give us a whole lot more to get excited about, all the way into next freaking year. And it was actually a lot of fun making a video on that last Direct, so I figured it would be fun to put together something just to talk about some of the new announcements that got us the most hyped. And yes, I know there will be ones that you may love but are definitely missing, but if you've got any favorite announcements of your own, let us know in the comments. Okay, let's go. Mario and Luigi Brothership I know that this series has had a good life on handhelds, but I never got to experience the series outside of the original on GBA and eventually Switch Online. But I mean, the game looks great though. Um, seems like it's gonna be a lot of fun. It seems to keep that original gameplay while adding in a few new features and gameplay mechanics that I'm sure are gonna make this its own unique title within the series. The trailer does make me want to pick up the series again though, if only to get some of that sweet Mario Brothers gibberish that I still quote to this day. Honestly, I think Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga might be one of the only Mario games to make me genuinely laugh. Looking forward to at least hearing some early reviews on this one. Nintendo World Championship NES Edition Okay, my memory's a little fuzzy, but isn't this kind of just like NES Remix on the Wii U? Uh, then again, I guess I never had a Wii U. I mean, even if it is, the content does look interesting. Larger scale challenges, speed runs, a vault of extras, and those manuals look so goddamn nice. I didn't see what the full price is going to be, or even if it's a good value for the package, but that limited edition uh, physical collection, it does look like a sweet shelf piece. Seems like one I'll try, but maybe when it goes on sale. Now, if they ever announce an SNES or N64 edition... Fantasian, Neo Dimension. Ooh, Legendary Squaresoft staff working on a new RPG? Pinterest peaked. I mean, the combat in this one does look interesting, like an RPG take on bullet curves. If nothing else, the inclusion of Nobu Uematsu and Hironobu Sakaguchi as creative directors? That's huge. That definitely puts this one on my radar. Hoping there's more information on this one soon. Mayo. Mio? Memories in Orbit. I won't lie, once I got past the gorgeous art style on display in the trailer for this game, my second thought was, this seems like it would play a lot like an Ori game. I could see those little small similarities in like the abilities, the camera, um, even the scale, but the effort put into the visuals alone tells me that the devs are probably trying to make something more here than just a clone. It's probably been a little while since I've played a good search action game that didn't have the word Metroid in the title. This one has a world of promise. Consider me interested. Looney Tunes, Wacky World of Sports. I'm kind of surprised I'm even putting this one on here, to be honest. I mean, I'm not really a big fan of sports games, and this one is nothing but sports games. But I do love those arcadey types of sports games, you know, where rules, physics, and sportsmanship just get completely thrown out in favor of having a breaks off fun time. And this game could be that? Maybe? Okay, probably not. Like, I know the Looney Tunes don't have an amazing track record for quality video games, yet for whatever reason, I want to believe a simple premise like this might have some legs to it. Good or bad, it'll be what I deserve for placing hope in a WB product in 2024. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD It's nice to see this one getting another re-release. I remember playing it on the Wii and having a good time with it, but kinda missed the 3DS release with all that extra content. Fortunately, it looks like all that extra content is coming to the Switch version as well. This is another one of those titles that I am more than happy to try out, but I'm absolutely hoping that it's going to be at a price tag that's not full AAA. I mean, I want to play it, but not $79 plus tax want to play it right now. Feel me? Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake Okay, so the qualifiers in that title absolutely got a laugh out of me at first, but those visuals are no joke. Dragon Quest is one of those series that I've kind of taken loosely to over the years, but I've never quite taken to it the way I did with Final Fantasy. But, since I always seem to miss the original series remasters when they go on sale anyway, a fresh way to experience Dragon Quest 3 for the first time is appreciated. I also love that just as the initial hype from that trailer is about to wear off, they announced the original two games getting the same treatment for later in 2025. 
And that is going to be one hell of an exciting thing if this one turns out to be great. Here's hoping. Funko Fusion. Now, am I actually excited for this one? No, not especially. But seeing the announcement had me thinking, oh yeah, Funko have the rights to like every IP under the sun. Why wouldn't they try doing a Lego? Most of the franchises under their belt are most definitely in my wheelhouse, but the gameplay is going to be what decides if this ends up becoming another flash in the pan, or... Uh, who am I kidding? It's Funko. The game will probably print money. Congratulations on the new cocaine yacht, Funko executives. Metal Slug Attack. Reloaded. To be honest, I never got to try Metal Slug Attack when it came out on mobile back in 2016. But I do like a good tower defense game, and Metal Slug seems like a franchise that could do good things with the genre. Until that other Metal Slug strategy game gets released, this might be a nice holdover. More for Nintendo Switch Online. New Nintendo Online drops are usually pretty exciting for me. Kind of up there with that feeling I used to get when games would surprise drop on the Wii U Virtual Console back in the day. I didn't really think anything was going to beat the announcement of five whole-ass Mega Man games dropping the other week, but Nintendo just topped that effortlessly. For the GBA, we're getting both Four Swords, which is also a stealth link to the Passport, as well as Metroid Zero Mission. The possibility of a proper Four Swords adventure with friends and not having to go to eBay for cables, extra Game Boys, and copies of the game is a damn exciting one. Now, I've still got my Game Boy Advance SP and copy of Zero Mission, which I will never part with, but any new Metroid added to an online service is a welcome Metroid. Honestly, I'm excited for people who are going to get to play this for the first time now. Also, I guess I was asleep at the wheel, but apparently there's a 17 plus N64 collection now? Well, at least that means drops for both the original Turok as well as Perfect Dark, with online multiplayer. That's actually a nice amount of new Perfect Dark in a small amount of time. Joanna Dark fans are eating good right now. Hopefully the 17 plus designation leaves room for games like Mace of the Dark Ages and, God willing someday, the N64 port of Resident Evil 2. Dare to dream, people. Dare to dream. A new Marvel vs. Capcom collection. Oh shit, it's a new Capcom fighting collection. I know, I know, but I can't help it. I am an absolute sucker for these especially when they include titles that I haven't seen in a proper release in a long time. Now, I checked out the extended trailer after the Direct, and this one is going to include Children of the Atom, Marvel Super Heroes, both vs. Street Fighter games, the first two Marvel vs. Capcom titles, and the Punisher beat-em-up. Fucking sold! Of course, if there's one thing I've learned from picking up the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection on Switch, it's that the regular Joy-Con controller is a poor choice for a pad. But when I inevitably pick one up and I'm looking for a game to pair with it, it'll most likely be this one. New goddamn Zelda. It happened. It finally happened. For the first time since the CDI, Zelda is getting her own standalone adventure with The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This one looks to be keeping the same art style used from the Link's Awakening remake on Switch, a game which I both loved and 100%. The gameplay is keeping with the uh, traditional overhead view you'd be used to seeing in the Zelda game, but instead of a standard sword and shield, Zelda is armed with a magic staff called the Trirod. This weapon can create new objects called Echoes that can seemingly conjure copies of objects, enemies, and who knows what else at this point. They seem to be really emphasizing the possibilities the staff will open up for gameplay, hearkening back to what they seem to be encouraging with Tears of the Kingdom. I am all for a new Legend of Zelda game that lets me explore Hyrule in a way I couldn't before, and this game looks like it's going to deliver on that and then some. Also, I really, really want that special edition Switch Lite because I am weak. They just make them so shiny! Metroid Prime 4, at last. Holy shit, it's real. I think the last anybody heard from Nintendo on the existence of a new Metroid Prime game was back in 2017. I mean, it was obvious that Metroid Prime was still on Nintendo's radar. You know, we did get that Metroid Prime HD remaster just last year. And how is Metroid Prime 4 Beyond looking so far? Mm, pretty damn good. I didn't see a ton of features that weren't standard gameplay elements for a Prime game so far, but the elements I have seen all look fantastic on the Switch. Nintendo are still a little sparse on core details, but this is still more information than we've gotten in years, so I'm not complaining very hard right now. 
It'll probably be another Nintendo Direct before we get more details on this one, but you can bet that is going to be one very highly watched stream. And those are some of the games we're most hyped from from the newest Nintendo Direct. I know we all have our own hopes and expectations whenever one of these drops, but even if I had time to put together a wish list beforehand, I don't think it would have topped what Nintendo had out on offer today. New Zelda and Metroid Prime are absolutely the highlights, at least for me, so much so that I almost kind of worry that some of the other titles might have been a bigger deal if they did not get overshadowed by those two in the hype department. But that's probably just cynicism. There is a lot to be excited about if you're a Switch owner right now. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta go check out that plus 17 section. Hey everyone, Tim here. Thanks for watching and for sticking it out until the end of the video. That was our impressions from the newest Nintendo Direct. Did we miss anything that had you excited? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you feel like supporting the channel, please consider doing the usual YouTube things. Liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. Even a single view really helps us out, and it's appreciated more than you know. We've got more on the way, but until next time, this has been Tim from Are You Okay? Stay tuned.